2024 started on rocky ground, bringing forth so many storms. It has been feeling like everyone I know is in the center of a tornado, cycling through a hurricane. And for me, I've been doing a lot of purging, clearing the way for a new path ahead. For a really long time, I've been repeating cycles staying deeply attached to old wounds and old loves that have been keeping me living in the past. But this year, the universe came knocking and said, it's time. February moon, the thick snow Many of the things I didn't have the courage to face before have been put in front of me to confront and work through, and it's been a very surreal few months as I've been learning to integrate the past in a way that actually lets me move on. Part of this process has looked like me learning to balance my masculine and feminine energies in a way I haven't embraced before. We live in a world that tells women we can and should do it all. But what society doesn't tell you is that you'll have to sacrifice your feminine energy to get there, and that constantly burning out trying to do it all is totally normal. But it's not normal, and it's not healthy either. So this year, I've been recalibrating and figuring out what is actually realistic for me to achieve on my own and how to do it without burning out. And as the sun began to return and the earth began to take a deep breath, I started to feel myself changing too. A feeling that I hadn't felt in so long. I had been through so many initiations through the fall and winter, and taking the time to integrate it all really looked like me shedding, rebirthing, and making a choice to become more embodied and untethered. I have to show you where Winnie is. <laughs> Where's Winnie? Are you in this bag? Are you in a bag? Oh, you're such a good boy. You're such a good boy. Are you in a bag, Winnie? And this started to look like me leaving perfectionism behind and taking steps towards the unknown, even as I felt my unhealthy belief systems rising. I've been showing up as I am, for me and not for anyone else doing things without worrying if I'll be liked, accepted, rejected, or abandoned if I wasn't good enough. And to be honest, it's been really, really uncomfortable. Sometimes it feels like my skin is crawling, but I think that's the point. I'm stepping outside my comfort zone because I can't get to where I want to go if I don't. And so I did something that I've wanted to do for so many years host a pagan sabbat in my enchanted forest. And so on Sunday, March 17th, that's what I did.
I am hosting my first ever Ostara gathering. I'm really excited. I really love the spring equinox and I really love how refreshing and renewing and revitalizing Ostara is. I'm almost done preparing things. I'm about to go into the forest and do a few things there. Yesterday I did all of my outdoor chores and today my dad has actually been doing some of the stuff I couldn't get to which is so foreign to me. I don't usually have help in the yard and so um, letting that sink in and yeah I'm just really excited. Um, I had actually planned on making a few different things. I was going to make an apple pie and I was going to make bread but by the time I finished my chores and eating last night it was 11 30 p.m and I was like I can either push myself to stay up till 4 a.m. again to get everything that I need done or I can just release it and make other things today and I did. I made the choice to just relax for the rest of the night and make different things today and releasing perfectionism is not easy for me and um, this has actually been a really big part of my journey being a people pleaser. So I ended up making cupcakes instead of a pie and I'm really happy that I did. They're really sweet. I put sparkles on them. There's a little girl coming and so yeah, I think they're really cute. I actually used to love to bake and to decorate cakes. I used to decorate really elaborate cakes. Uh, I'll put some photos up. I made this Cheshire cat cake and I made this Twin Peaks cake. I even made the like body wrapped in plastic. But yeah, so that felt good to just kind of let my perfectionism go today and really just enjoy the process. I'm also wearing my Ostara necklace from the Witch's Box. I really love this necklace. And the last round of cupcakes is in the oven. I am going to go into the forest. I made a little Easter egg hunt for Alara, the little girl, and I'm gonna go put that out now and just prep the forest for our little ceremony. I'm just going to run you through what we're going to do so that it can give you some ideas about how to celebrate Ostara. So we're going to go into ceremony and we are going to do some egg magic. We're going to talk about Ostara, we're going to call in the directions and the elements, and we are going to put all of the energy that we want to let go of moving through this. Hi! Someone's awoken from their nap. Um, so we're going to put energy into the eggs, things that we want to let go of that we don't want to bring through this equinox threshold. And we are going to raise a cone of power, which is where our, all our voices harmonize together. And when they reach the peak, we're going to drop the egg and break it and release that energy. And then we're going to close the circle and we're going to bury the egg and we're going to plant a plant over it so that it is renewed. Then after the ceremony, we are going to have a potluck and a fire and we're going to burn the herbs that are no longer serving us so I like to burn my dried herbs I don't want I don't like them to stick around my house too long because I can just feel that stagnation and Emily also dyed a bunch of eggshells for us to paint and to decorate and so we're going to have a little station to do that so that's what we're doing I'm very excited and everyone should be arriving very quickly so I need to get cracking <music>
also one of the last things that you need to do is strain the sun tea that I made. I put calendula, hibiscus, rose petals, rose hips, and I think that's it. It is the next day after our Ostara ceremony. A few updates about that. <laughs> Almost everybody canceled and some of them were kind of last minute. So it was a really small group. And because of that, my dad actually felt comfortable joining in the ceremony. He, he had never experienced anything like that before. So I really enjoyed that. And I hope that the whole ceremony brought him some hope for the future. In addition to letting our energy go into the egg, we also put our hands on the earth where we buried the egg and planted a flower and said some of the blessings and wishes that we hope to see come into our lives, things that we need to take action on in the spring. And something really, really funny happened during the ceremony. Winnie started throwing up as we were purging our energy and that was just divine timing. It was so funny. We were all just in tears laughing at that divine timing and I had just put up my familiars episode 2 video where we're talking about um, nurturing your bond with your familiar and I, in that video I mentioned about how you're including your familiar in your craft and this was just such a perfect ex perfect example. He, when he was you know, walking around us for the ceremony and then he just started throwing up as we were purging our energy. So it was just so funny. And it also is good to note that I have not seen or heard Winnie throw up in months. So again, divine timing. Ostara is such a renewing and revitalizing time on the wheel of the year. The sun is returning to us. Just remember that wording because Ostara is originally a pagan time on the wheel of the year and of course it had been Christianized at one point and but the origins of it are about the return of the sun to our land. We're always being told that January is the time when you want to make your resolutions but that is not the case. That is not in sync with our bodies and with nature. Ostara is actually a really great time to start thinking about you know the things that you want to change and the actions that you need to take to change that so i have renovated a room in my house my office my witch room and that video is coming up soon i'm just waiting for my curtains to arrive before i close off that video and so i'm very very excited to show you how this turned out because i feel like it's really going to change the game with my content and my inspiration and my creativity so i'm really really excited to be bringing you that video. I do have way more updates, but I'm going bowling with my girlfriends right now, so I will see you soon. Thank you so much for watching and being a part of my first Sabbath hosting experience, and I will see you next time. Bye!